This is the high speed lab, but that's not the only thing you do. Yep, I also do macro photography too. Macro is too. macro. Any, anything, anything. And then we go down in size to the scanning electron microscope. That, that far. You just yes. did a book on that. Uh, yep. With that. Yep. Cannabis under the microscope. Cannabis, marijuana under the microscope. High magnification of. There's interesting just, structures. I've had a look at that. There's yeah. really interesting structures on on these plants. Yep, a lot of strange uh, structures that hold the THC that have not been photographed well before. So I thought I would do that. What is hard about electron microscope photography? I know, I know uh, that sample prep. We should we should fire up a machine. We should. Uh, can we do that? Yeah, we can fire up a machine right now. Yeah, we can. Well, let's do that then. Okay. So the first, I have to I have to turn on some valves, which so, is uh, nitrogen. So we're firing up a scanning electron yep, microscope. Yep. Scanning now. electron microscope. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to fire up my favorite one, my Joel. Uh, 6100 here. Uh, the next thing I got to do is, is water. This cools uh, an oil diffusion pump. And this will take about 20 minutes to get up and uh, up and running. It's right now it's it's in a storage mode. And uh, this, this is the chamber, we can open one of these chambers, I can show you what's in here. But there's a uh, a bunch of components which are pretty similar to a camera. This is an aperture. Mm -hmm. So this, this aperture is responsible for the depth of, of, of field inside the Is that a physical aperture? Entrance. It's a physical aperture. Okay. Uh, right now it's set on, right now it is set at 110 micron, which it's uh, a pretty big aperture and it's, uh, it's for, set up for low magnification right now. Mm -hmm. So what happens here, there's a, a tungsten filament at the top which emits electrons. And these electrons have to travel inside a vacuum and not hit anything like air. That's why you can't have air in there. Um, and they're focused by magnetic fields. So in this case, there's a magnetic field here, which is a lens. There's also another magnetic uh, field uh, down below here, which is a second lens. And there's a final lens, uh, a third lens system, uh, just before the specimen. So what happens with this, this device is we focus an image of that filament very, very small on the sample, and then it's scanned across that sample. Mm -hmm. So at like this point, we see how many electrons are, are detected, and then the beam moves to another point, we detect the electrons, it moves to another point, we detect the electrons, it moves through. So it's pixel by pixel by pixel as it scans across the sample. Uh, in a preview mode, it does, it'll scan the whole sample every uh, 30 times a second. Mm -hmm. But in a movie mode, when we actually take, excuse me, a, a, a take a still image, uh, it has to be in a photo mode and it might take four minutes to scan the image in a photo mode. Mm -hmm. So it takes a, a pretty good resolution images. Uh, and there's a lot of, of What's the high, 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 How high is the resolution that comes out of it? Uh, we can, we can, with a good sample and a good day, um, probably a hundred thousand magnification. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that, that would take about 20 or 30 minutes to put the, the system in. And is this mode. then how you acquire the image? This is the old system of acquiring the images, which is a, a photographing the CRT, which is the cathode ray tube, which used to be used to expose, uh, the, the gold standard of data coming uh -huh. out of scanning electrons back in the day <laughs> was four by five Polaroid film. Awesome. So um, it's, it's Polaroid is no longer manufactured. So uh, for a couple of years, we photographed the screen and you could get a working image off of that. And it's not bad, but uh, a couple of years ago, I digitized the output of this machine because right. it generates a digital output um, that is sent to the CRT. And I'm like, oh, wait, 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 let's just take that digital signal and send it right to a machine, a computer, and I'll be able so to do it much better. So pretty much there's a TIFF file or something. It's uh, a TIFF file, yep. yeah. Uh, completely uncompressed TIFF file. And I have a sample here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, we'll take some pictures of this sample because it's kind of a cool one. So let's see if we can press Does it this. even fit in there? I could fit it in there. We, okay. can, make, we can make it fit. So this is a, a conductive tape and it's carbon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a stub and, uh, and the next thing I would do is I'm going to get some, some of these specimens out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a couple seeds on there, maybe. 
Yeah, there's, so there's four seeds on there. And this, these seeds are really pretty big. Um, but keep in mind, we can, we can image down and see individual bacteria crawling on the surface of the seeds. And there's probably bacteria on the seeds. So that's, that's one uh, specimen that we're going to use. I'm going to put it over here in this device. And this is a sputter system. And this sputter system is, uh, it coats samples with gold. And the reason we use gold is because it conducts electricity really, really well. And it happens to be really easy to use with a sputter coater. The design looks 70s. It is 70s. They've made, <laughs> they have made the same the, model. The timing setup. Yeah, they have, they have made the same so model awesome. for a number of years. So this is the gold. The gold is built up on this container and it's no longer, this is what the astronauts do in their space helmets. They have a gold coating on there to um, reflect all the, the extra light. Well, so, it's so thin that you can actually look through? Yeah, you can look through it, but if I get rid of that, then we can see the ignition of the plasma. Oh, you're taking the gold off? Yeah. Is that? Because this is... Oh, it'll, it'll, it'll coat itself again. Yeah, ah. so this is the junk, the junk gold that we don't really want. I see. I thought and it had a function, but it's just no, it's being just, deposited on the glass. Yeah, by, by pretty ah, much accident. So okay. we want to be able to see what happens inside the, the sputter coater. And if I didn't have a film crew here, I would clean this with all sorts of stuff. This is usually a process that takes a while. So there's our samples, and then we'll, uh, we'll put the seals back on there now that we've sort of cleaned the side and we can see what's happening. And it doesn't take a super high vacuum. It, it only takes uh, about 40 to 50 microns. So the sputter system has uh, a high potential and a ground, and the, the argon atoms bang into the gold and the gold now has the same potential as the this top surface where's the gold the gold is a target that's on the top panel okay. so those argon they, they pound into this gold sample mm -hmm. and then they have the same charge as that sample so now you have a plus and a plus next to each other and they okay. shoot away from each other with a fantastic velocity we're going to put a a, a, just a tremendous amount of gold on here. We're going to do 120 seconds worth of depositing of gold, which how is... How many atom layers is that? Uh, <laughs> well, how thick will that be? How thick will that be? It will probably be uh, in excess of 600 nanometers. Oh, okay. So it's an optical coating. So it's, it's okay. uh, thick enough that it will uh, it'll appear brown, or if it's really thick, it'll start to look gold. So um, what I have to do now is I have, to, I have to bleed argon into the chamber for sure. So there's my, my first argon bleed. I close the valve and I let that argon pump out. And then I'm going to open it again and let some more argon in. So you're replacing all the air with argon? It, if whatever's in there is now going to have, remember, it's only 500 um, millitor right now pressure so it's a pretty small uh, amount of, of gas in there compared to atmospheric pressure mm -hmm. so it's been twice flush with argon and now if i hit this we should be able to ignite oh, yeah. a plasma so we'll turn out the room lights and so that's that's the argon plasma if there was um air in there it would it would be kind of a, a much more pinkish or red color so this is a typical prep of just about every scanning electron microscope sample. Uh, my son put a Lego guy in there. <laughs> Harry Potter. Like gold-coated Harry, Harry Potter. Gary, gold-coated Harry Potter Lego. And, and he keeps it in a box. And he's like 15 now, but he's, he's, he did that when he was he like... He knows the gold will come off if he, he plays knows, with if it. He touches it. So it's in a little clear box. Cool. There's an electron emitter where the electrons come out of the, the final... Uh, magnetic lens at the bottom and then there's the, the electron detector is this device over here in the far right what happens so that should do it and here's here's some hot plants 
they look a lot like cannabis, which is, which is kind of worth, you know, it, it's a great testing material for. For the uh, book you did. Yeah. You did those. You did those pictures for the cannabis book back home, right? Yeah, those were home. You had a. But you yeah, have, yeah, you my my a, old a, my old <laughs> microscope is dead now. But, but you had an electron micros microscope in your living in room. my living room, yeah, for like eight years. Wow, it was a very nice machine. Sorry to see it go. My Cambridge S two hundred, but these are um, this is a series I've been doing on lichens, uh, biological interaction between uh, plants, lichen and fungus. Is a, um, and here, this is a a specimen that I that I prepped and then verified that it was good here before going over to a really good machine. Um, and uh, this is a uh, lichen is a relationship between algae and fungus. So here the, the structures are interacting with each other, which is kind of fun. The students did a big uh, project where they shot lichen for a researcher from uh, Evergreen University. So we do a lot of collaborations with other universities and uh, the researchers love free images, and the students love doing things that are real and yeah. not. And uh, they came up with some new structures that the researcher had never seen before, so he was very excited with that. So there's, this whole thing is just filled with lichen. So this is, uh, the, the once, once we're at vacuum, I know we're at vacuum because of this gauge is lit in the back, which is about as ridiculous as it gets. <laughs> so that's the indicator. That yeah, gauge. so I have to turn on the high voltage, which is here. Um, I'm at incredibly low voltage right now. I'm at, at two, uh, 2,000 volts, which is way lower than typical accelerating voltage that I'd normally use. Um, so we'll see what this looks like with that. And then I, I turn on the filament, and I have to bring the filament up to uh, the correct stable mm. filament. And I can already get an image there. And then uh, the idea is I have to focus that image. And, uh, and then to figure out what magnification I'm at, we can go down in, in magnification uh, quite a bit. So the, typically the way that you work a scanning electron microscope is we go to a very, very high magnification focus and then we pull out in magnification and, and everything will be in really good focus. I also have brightness and contrast where here's a contrast and I have brightness and do all sorts of stuff with that. Um, I can look around on this, this specimen to see what some of these other things are. There's, there's something in there. If I want to take a picture of this, then I come over to this system, and I actually have a, a digitization on this, uh, and I use a piece <clears throat> of software called Orion, which digitizes the beam. Right. I probably don't have the, the, the output set correctly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the output of this as I come over and, and tell it, send it to the photo over here. Um, ah. I can say save as when it's all happy. And oh, so you're pretty much scanning the yeah. The so this now. is a slow. It's actually a digital signal out of this particular scope, but this is taking that digital signal that would normally go to the, the photo screen and bringing it over here to the computer through a digital frame grabber. This looks way higher resolved than I anticipated looking just at the screen. Oh yeah, this is. It, it gives out a pretty nice signal, and. Uh, it's, it's probably a little dark in here. I like to have it lightened up a little bit so that I can adjust the file um, a little bit better. It's like playing a violin. Yeah. The more time you spend practicing, the better you will be. So I have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on various different microscopes. Let's see what the kids have. We have guitar strings. We have butterfly wings. Oh, the butterfly wings are always cool. Or something, I don't... What was that? Butterfly wings, I'm pretty sure. Butterfly wings are about as nasty a sample as you can get. They charge. They're very difficult to deal with many times. I don't even know what stage. This stage, we can't use this because this is the wrong stage. This is a Hitachi stage. This is a fairly chunky piece of equipment. Are there electron microscopes that are smaller? There are uh, a number of little tiny ones. 
As in like little tabletop, size? yeah, little oh, teeny yeah. tiny ones. But the the trouble with those is they might not have the resolution, oh, okay. and they they're they're quick and easy. The other problem with those particular uh, microscopes is uh, they're fairly expensive and they're not great to learn on. Just let's hit a button and you get something. So you know these. I, I really want the students to do a lot of. Sure of uh, understanding what happens with a beam and what goes on with uh, the distances and you know a, a lot of the other, <clears throat> you know, everything from when sample prep to, these are hens and chickens. So I do a course focus somewhere in there. Can you tell me why it rotates when you focus? It's, it actually is because the beam is rotating. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is the beam it, on, a, on a screw that gets moved no, up and down? No, the focus rotates. The focus rotates. Yeah, optically the focus rotates okay. because remember the electrons as they come down are spinning. Yeah. And it's it's a, a, a transform of the magnetic field that is similar to an optic. So when you when you turn that, you change the magnetic field of the lens? Yes. Okay, exactly. I see, I see. So we're, we're effectively changing the, the magnetic uh, field of the final. That is fine. Um, the, the electrons, they, you know, people think it's just like optics, they get bent like that. No, it's, uh, it's they're spinning in a circle, and the tightness of the circle has to do with how they interact with that op the, the, sure. with the magnetic field. So it's, it's exactly similar to optics, uh, light optics, but it's electron optics. All right. So, um, it's a fun. So this has... There's more structure here. Yeah, this is a, a seed. And like all seeds, they are just filled with nutrients for all sorts of goodies. <laughs> and, you know, this is everything from pollen to mold. And this is 4,000 X right here. I'm gonna have to change the speed of the stage. So, um, I don't even know what this is. We just don't know. <clears throat> and this is, this is one micron across. So remember, 70 microns is one human hair. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty small structure. Um, and then, <laughs> right now, I'm, I'm a beyond, I'm working at 33,000 uh, magnifications, but I'm beyond the resolution settings. So I really want to be at a much higher resolution setting, which is what's going on here. But as I go to a higher resolution setting, I start to see that there's noise in the signal. The sure. signal to noise is, so you're constantly balancing depth of field, spot size, signal to noise ratio, accelerating voltage, charging on the sample, as well as, as things like saturation. So is, is there a point when and you go too high in the voltage that the, the specimen just gets... Oh fried? yeah, you can blow stuff apart. You can, okay. you can actually melt specimens if, okay. if they're uh, soluble. Um, as, as they, if they're apt to melt. I've had uh, some researchers tell me they've melted gallium samples. <laughs> but here's 18,000. This is probably a little piece of... I don't know, probably a bacteria or something that's on the surface of the seeds. The seeds are like they're just waiting to be eaten by everybody and sure. they're very nutritious so there's lots of stuff there um so that's actually not not bad for adjustments in a few seconds at 7500 uh, x typically when i when i have this running i'm i we turn half the lights off and we have the mood lighting on which are these uh these other lights in the room this is probably the parts of some I don't know what that is. Little. Sometimes you see insects and chunks of insects, dead insects and things. You can often see stuff that you just can't identify. You know, you don't know what, what these seeds were stored in or what all this junk is on the surface. So that's, that's pretty common. <laughs>